Hello, today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Tunisian honeycomb stitch. The Tunisian honeycomb stitch creates a very pretty and unique texture by alternating the Tunisian simple stitch and the Tunisian pearl stitch. If you would like to try a beginner pattern after watching this video tutorial, check out my free easy honeycomb dishcloth pattern. I'll link it below. Today I'm using a 12 inch size I 5.5 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook by Furls, but you can practice with a shorter Tunisian hook or even a regular hook that does not have a handle. I'm also using Starlet Yarn by Mary Maxim and it's a medium four weight yarn. Now let's get started. To start, chain a multiple of two. Today I'm going to chain 14 chains. Starting with the second chain from the hook, pick up a loop and each chain across. You should have 14 loops on the hook. Make a normal return pass by yarning over the hook, pull through the first loop on the hook, yarn over, and pull through the next two loops on the hook. Continue yarning over and pulling through the next two loops on the hook until one loop remains on the hook. You should now have 14 stitches. The honeycomb stitch has a two row repeat. We will now begin the first row of the two row repeat. The stitch on the hook counts as the first stitch of the row and it's counted as a Tunisian knit stitch. Now we're going to make a Tunisian simple stitch into the next stitch by inserting the hook behind the front vertical bar of the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through the first loop on the hook to pull up a loop. Now we will make a Tunisian purl stitch in the next stitch by bringing the working yarn to the front of the hook, insert the hook behind the front vertical bar of the next stitch. I like to hold the working yarn down with my thumb right here, and while continuing to hold the yarn with my thumb, I pull through the stitch to pull up a loop. Now continue alternating the Tunisian simple stitch and the Tunisian purl stitch across until you have one stitch remaining. I'm going to continue across and when I have one stitch remaining, I will check back in with you. To work into the last stitch, tilt the work a little and look for the two vertical bars at the end of the row. Insert the hook under these last two vertical bars, yarn over, and pull through the stitch to pull up a loop. And now you can make a return pass by yarning over and pulling through the first loop on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the next two loops on the hook and continue yarning over and pulling through the next two loops on the hook until you have one loop remaining. I'm going to finish my return pass and then I'll check back in with you. Now that I've completed my return pass, I'm ready to begin the second row of the repeat. Remembering that the first loop on the hook is counted as a Tunisian knit stitch, now we're going to put a Tunisian purl stitch in the next stitch. Now put a Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. Repeat this across by alternating the Tunisian purl stitch and the Tunisian simple stitch until you have one stitch remaining. When I have one stitch remaining, I'll check back in with you. 
Now work into this stitch like you did the previous row. And now you can make a regular return pass. Now you will continue to repeat the two rows until you have reached the desired length. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you liked it, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more videos and free patterns, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Until next time, bye and happy crocheting!